What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. So today we are talking about the latest from ILNP, their Harvest Collection for fall 2022. We've got six brand new polishes. They're all the same formula in different colors. So we've got these super sparkly, flaky autumnal shades. And to be honest, a lot of them looked very similar in the bottle, but once I swatched them, I saw a lot of differences. So I'm really looking forward to swatching these for you today. If you haven't heard of ILNP before, before they are an independent nail polish brand that is based out of the US. They are seven free, meaning they are free of seven of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. And they have listed on their website that they make a conscious effort to avoid purchasing animal or insect derived materials, but they aren't specifically listed as vegan. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, like I said, I'm really excited to swatch these shades. I absolutely love full nail polish collections and I love the cohesive collections from ILNP where they do the same finish in six different colors. And I just love the super fall vibes of these. And I'm also excited to show you the differences of each one, because like I said, when I first got them, I was like, wow, a lot of these shades are very similar. So let me dive into the swatches. Then we'll talk a little bit more about pricing, availability, my thoughts on the collection, all that good stuff. So roll the footage. As with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today, I'm switching it up. I'm using the Cirque base coat, so I will link that down below. So first up in the collection, we have this shade Dakota, and this one is a really deep pinky toned purple shade. So we've got this almost crelly like base. It's not super opaque, but it's also not too jelly like. So you can see the beautiful flakies coming through, but it is opaque enough that it actually reaches full opacity in two coats on my short nails. And then we have all of these gorgeous flakies in here. So it almost looks like there's a little bit of a multi-chromatic shimmer going on. Head on, most of the flakies look to be this really intense fuchsia and even into like a reddish color, but then around the edges, you actually get a full rainbow of colors. So I see it going into orange, into yellow, into green, and a little bit blue at more extreme angles. It's just such a deep color. It's not too dark that it looks black, and it has that fun lit from within look that I always love to see in a vampy polish. Moving on, we have the shade Penny, and this was the first of the shades that I figured were very similar, and I thought this was going to be an orange, but once I applied it on my nails, I felt like it was pretty distinctly red. So you can even see there's almost this pinky reddish base color going on. And then all of the orange is really concentrated into the flakies. So it's super saturated with them and looking head on again, we have this almost multi-chrome feel where straight on, they look to be mostly red, orange, and gold. And then around the edges, you get this really intense yellowish, greenish, almost blue color. So it is a beautiful shade. I love that they made it a little bit more of a reddish tone. And I love that almost cool toned red base color that really works well with these very warm flakies within it. Again, this one was fully opaque in two coats for me. Next, we have the shade Pumpkin Patch. And this one is a super bright orange Crelly base. This one actually felt a little bit more jelly like than the others that I had tried, but it still ended up giving me full coverage in those two coats. But I do have a feeling if you have longer nails, you might need a third for this one. And then on top of that base, we have a really intense golden flaky running throughout. And then because we have that almost jelly like orange in there, it actually shifts some of those gold flakies to look orange as well. So it's really bright. It's really fun. I feel like this is actually a great transitional color because it's bright enough to feel like an almost summery orange. But with that golden shimmer in there, it feels very autumnal. And I also think this is a great Halloween color, by the way. And then we have the shade Hayride. And this one I would actually say is incredibly similar to Pumpkin Patch, but I thought this was a really unique way to put together a collection because this is almost like the muted version of Pumpkin Patch. Again, we have that sort of jelly-like base color, and this time it's sort of a muted brownish orange base. And then again, we have those golden flakies in there that combined with the jelly base can look a little bit orange as well. So these two shades are the most similar out of all of them. I thought we were going to have a lot more of this type of shade, but I love that this is the muted version. For those of you who feel like a bright orange is just a little bit too summery for autumn, I feel like this is the perfect response to that because it's almost like a brownish orange version of it. Moving 
Moving on, we have the shade Autumn, and I actually didn't know what to expect of this shade in the bottle because it really looks like a flaky multi-chrome, but once I started applying it, I was able to see a little bit more of the color and what exactly was in this shade. So we almost have this brownish, purpley base color. Again, sort of that Crelly-like formula where it's in between a cream and a jelly, and it still reaches that nice full opacity in two coats. And then we have these really intense multi-chromatic flakes running throughout in all of these autumnal colors. So head on, you've got a lot of orange and gold and yellow. And then around the edges, you see a lot of green and even into blue. So it's a really beautiful shade. I feel like this represents all of the colors of autumn. So I think it's perfectly named. It's such a gorgeous shade. I feel like this is such a classic, but it's in a sort of elevated formula with those flakies. And last but definitely not least, we have the shade Olive Grove. And this one is a stunning olive green base. It almost has a little bit of like a brownish hue to it. And then we have these really intense golden yellow flakies running throughout. And then mixed with that jelly-like base, we have a lot of what looks like a greenish flaky coming through, but I'm pretty sure these are yellow on their own. So it's really beautiful. It's really dimensional. I was able to get full coverage in two coats, but looking at it on camera, I feel like it is slightly patchier than it looked in real life. So I might do a third coat if my nails were a little bit longer, but honestly, in person and not in an HD close-up, I feel like this was perfect in two coats. I absolutely love a green nail polish, and I think this sort of mossy, olivey green is just perfect for this time of year. So here are all of the shades together, and I have to say I absolutely love this color story. I was a little worried when I first got them that they were going to be all kind of within the same range, but once I put them on my nail, I was able to see so many differences in the colors, and I feel like it's such a beautiful range of all of the shades that we see in the trees during autumn, and it just feels like the perfect collection for that. And I also feel like the flakies themselves feel kind of like leaves because they're sort of irregular and imperfect, and they just add such a nice touch to the polish. I'm really taking this collection very literally, but it almost feels like they meant it to be taken that way. So definitely appreciate that. All of the colors are just stunning, and you can see the very subtle differences between Pumpkin Patch and Hayride. Like I said, I think they're the two shades that are the most similar, but Hayride is more of like the desaturated version of it that feels a little bit more settling into fall rather than that sort of bright Halloween-y transition kind of color. So those are the polishes, and overall, I absolutely love them. I really enjoyed the opacity of these polishes. Something that I've noticed in the past with ILNP is that they have a really thin formula, and a lot of times their polishes are three coaters on me, which is not something that I mind because like I said, it's pretty thin, so it doesn't feel like you have a really thick manicure on and you have too many coats. And I also like how delicate they are, so you can really build up the coverage. But I have to say, I love when I come across really opaque shades from them, and I really enjoyed the opacity of these. I just think the formulas in general still had that delicate, soft feeling, but they were a lot more opaque, and I definitely loved that. And like I said, the colors are way different on the nails than they look in the bottle, and there's so much more going on in each one than you see when you first look at them. I could honestly justify having the whole collection, but I also appreciate that there are little differences that if you like a particular type of orange, but you don't like another type, then you can really pick and choose what works for you here. And as a huge fall lover, I definitely appreciate them keeping the colors traditional, but not going for the traditional nail polish colors, like the mustard, the navy blue, that kind of thing. I always love those colors, but I really just like the colors of fall in nature. So definitely loved the color story of this as well. So these polishes come in 12 milliliter bottles. They do have a soft touch cap and they also have what I would consider to be a medium wide flat brush. I feel like it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not too wide, but it's not too skinny. So it really works for everyone in my opinion. And those bottles retail for $10 USD each on the ILMP website. So I'll link that down below. But one thing I do want to mention, I never talk about this because I don't always get these reviews up in time for it. But when ILNP announces new collections, they always have the polishes available for pre-order on their website. And during their pre-order, they are discounted $1. So the polishes retail for $9 USD each. So this is one of the rare occasions where I actually got the swatch and review up in time for the pre-order. So at the time this video is released, they are still discounted. I believe that ends tomorrow 
tomorrow though. But yeah, just something to keep in mind if you're a fan of ILNP and you like a discount, it's always good to check out their pre-orders. But yeah, I'm curious to hear what you think. What do you think of this collection? What do you think of these shades being somewhat similar? Are there any that you absolutely love, absolutely hate? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a second channel, my vlog channel, where I talk a little bit more about my life behind the scenes. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. And of course, a huge shout out to my cosmic admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocketman's daughter, and Paola. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact is actually not a question that was submitted. Today I want to give you a little bit of an update because back in like 2018 or 2019, I mentioned in a fun fact that I really can't listen to podcasts or audiobooks just because I have a short attention span and I find myself zoning out and then I completely lose track of where I am and I have to rewind and it gets really annoying. But I, I wanted to give you guys an update because I feel like things have changed a lot since then. I have somewhat recently discovered, well actually that's not true, I've been enjoying podcasts for a really long time now, since even before 2020, but specifically since the events of 2020, I found myself alone at home a lot. So I found a lot of comfort in just kind of hearing people talk. And I think podcasts help me through that a lot. But I somewhat recently discovered that when I am in a situation where I am doing something tedious that I am not particularly enjoying, audiobooks are a huge help for that. So let me give you a prime example. I have been listening to audiobooks a little bit while I'm doing my cardio. And I feel like when I don't have something else to distract me with, and I need to distract myself from the cardio, I find myself listening so well to audiobooks. So I feel like that has started to change my opinion a little bit on them. I will say I do 100% prefer to read like a physical book or even read on my phone just because I feel like I pick it up a lot better when I see it. But lately I've just been finding myself doing these kind of repetitive monotonous things and like needing something to listen to while I'm doing them. But I've started kind of like dipping my toes into the audiobook thing. It's difficult because I have to find a voice that I like and I don't like when they do, like when they put on voices for certain characters, that kind of annoys me. I'm not, I wouldn't say I love audiobooks. I wouldn't even say that I really like them, but I do think that they have been a little bit helpful. So I thought I would give you guys an update because things change and maybe if you also hated audiobooks, give it another try, see what you think. All right, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.